Hi, I'm Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. Today, we're going to take a look at Camera Raw 5, which ships with Creative Suite 4. This important module is used when you develop your RAW files from a digital camera. Now, starting with Camera Raw 5, you can actually use this on TIFF or JPEG files, and the adjustments will be non-destructively applied. But to get the best results, you really should be shooting Camera Raw. So if your camera offers that option, be sure to take advantage of it. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at some of the Camera Raw features in CS4. I've launched Bridge, which allows me to browse and quickly see several images. And I'm just going to go ahead and command click here on a couple of images to open them. I've got four selected, and I can press Return. Now, when Photoshop detects a RAW file, it's going to use RAW to open them up. You'll notice some very important changes here within the image. One of those options is to actually limit an adjustment using a gradient. So I can use a graduated filter here and click on it and say that I want to do an exposure adjustment over distance. I'll set that to negative 6. Now when I click and drag, I'm defining the range of the adjustment. You could do it at an angle if you need to, or drag straight down, and it does a nice graduated fall off. We can go ahead and grab the starting point if we need to. And what you're seeing here is that it's doing a graduated adjustment over the distance from here to here. And this is nice. If we need to, we can actually edit this and just pull that down a bit. And it's doing essentially a pull down in the exposure area up at the top of the frame and then a gradual fall off as it gets to the bottom of the frame. Click the hand tool there to exit that. Now, that's nice. The ability to make a gradual adjustment while you develop the file ensures that you could take advantage of changes, for example, from a skyline or maybe a lighting source that you need to accommodate for. But there's a lot more we can do. With Inside Camera Raw here, we also have that vibrance adjustment we talked about before. And vibrance is a useful way to pop colors while preserving some of the more subtle details. It works great for skin tones or colors like red where doing too much of a saturation adjustment would actually lose detail in the image. So that vibrance adjustment comes in handy there and really makes the colors pop without losing the details inside of our image. Let's go ahead and switch to another image to see some other important changes inside of Camera Raw 5. I can click on an image here and actually apply a bit of a vignette adjustment. Let's go ahead and switch over to the Lens Correction tab and actually put a little bit of vignette controls. Now normally we had lens vignette and you could darken the edges or open it up and that was a useful way if you were trying to accommodate for maybe the hood being on the lens, it got a little darker at the edges, or maybe just a vignette for stylistic purposes. The challenge though is when you started to add a crop. So you put the vignette on and you grab the crop tool and you crop the image And you notice that it did the darkening up here, but down here, not so much. That's because the vignette controls were only being used for the actual camera lens. So that's fine if you want to use those controls to remove a little bit of a vignette that's in the image itself. But what you want to take advantage of is the post-crop vignette, which is a very useful way to stylize the image, darkening the edges to draw the viewer's eye towards the center. This way we can go ahead and darken it and you'll see that it gets darker at the edges respecting the actual crop. And here we pushed it pretty far. We'll tweak midpoint there and that's a very stylized way to push the viewer's eye towards the center of the screen. So that post crop vignette is useful if you want to harness a vignette for a stylization to the image. Let's see a couple more things. I'm going to go ahead and select this image here, and there's quite a bit of brightness in the image. And what I want to do is limit that. We're going to go ahead here and go back to the Basic tab and pull Exposure down. That's fine. Get a little bit darker in the image, and I'm happy with the background. But notice how the butterfly and the part of the flower here really seem a bit dark. Fortunately, we have a new tool here that allows us to do an adjustment brush. You can click on the adjustment brush and then do things like adjust exposure. Now as we click, it's actually adjusting the exposure where we're painting. We can combine multiple strokes there and just make sure that it's set to add. 
So now as we paint, you see that it adds up and it gets brighter. If you want to get rid of that, you can actually show the pins there or temporarily clear it. Change your mind, just choose undo and it comes right back. So this is a useful way if you need to make an adjustment. Notice there as we brush in a little bit of exposure to bring that back out. So that's great. We can actually make adjustments using a brush tool to isolate them to just the brushed areas. And it's not just exposure. You could do things like contrast, saturation, clarity, sharpening, going after just the details in the image you need so you can make them pop as required. Let's take a look at one more important thing we can do. Now I'm going to switch to a shot here and this shot's pretty good. We'll go ahead and make a general exposure adjustment. I'll just click auto and let it do its thing. Open that up just a little. That's pretty good. What I want to take advantage here are some of the new features. We're going to pop vibrance and notice how with the raw file it makes the colors richer but doesn't do too much to her skin tones. If we were to crank saturation, she'd look like she had a sunburn. So that works well. Well, what I want to take advantage here is the ability to actually heal. So we're going to use spot removal, this brush tool up front. This is not quite as powerful as what you would see with the cloning tool or the healing brush, but it does work. Another great use for it is to actually get rid of sensor dust if you have it on an image, because then you could do this and then take it from one image and apply that setting to another photo within Camera Raw. Let's go ahead here and circle around that spot, drag it to where it needs to go, and then grab this green target here and tell it where to sample from. We're going to pull it from the forehead. Notice it did a great job. It actually got rid of that pimple on her head. We'll take the little drool spot here on the shirt and sample from further down in the shirt where it's clean and let that blend together. And there you go. Notice we were able to hide that too. Let's go ahead and grab that actual adjustment brush real quick and we're going to do a new adjustment pulling down exposure and gently paint on her forehead here which is a little bit bright and that works well. Remember you can always tweak it by just adjusting the slider to taste and that looks great. So. Lots of cool things we could do right inside of Camera Raw, all non-destructively applied to your image. So when you're all set, there's a couple cool things you could do. If you need to, you can actually go ahead and take the settings from one image and simply apply those by selecting them and saying synchronize. That works great because if you wanted to do a spot removal on say a piece of sensor dust, you could fix it in one image and then synchronize that healing across all the images, which is a pretty useful way to touch it up. But when you're all set here, you can go ahead and shift click on all the images to select all four and then click the open images button and it'll send them into Photoshop where you can do any further processing as needed. So that's it for this episode. I hope you learned some of the new things that you could do with Photoshop CS4. It's a very cool release with lots of great new features that really make it easier to get the job done. Go ahead and visit cs4.com. We could find out additional information enter our contest, and find all of the episodes in one place. And if you enjoy our training, be sure to check out our regular series. We offer two free weekly podcasts all about Photoshop. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. It's designed for people who work in digital photography, graphic design, or just generalists who want to get more out of what Photoshop offers. For those of you who work in video and motion graphics, we offer another show called Photoshop for Video. And this show is all about using Photoshop to create content for professional video production. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Rich Harrington.